Now that we've walked through how coolant flows through the short blocks of these engines, and we've taken a really deep dive into how the coolant flows through the heads of these engines, I think you guys can start to see why it appears that cylinder number four is actually getting inadequate cooling with that factory coolant design for these engines. And that's why these reverse cooling mod kits that are on the market might actually be a really, really good idea to provide some protection for your engine and to maintain more even cylinder temperatures across all four cylinders. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. So what you're looking at in front of me are two of the reverse cooling mod kits that are on the market. This one right here is the VEMS tuning kit. This sells for about $90 and it got to me in just a few days. And then this one right here in front of me, this is actually the Get a Dom tuning kit. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit closer comparison of each of these kits, and then I'm gonna walk through installing one of these kits on my engine. As you can see, I've actually installed the other head on this engine, and I've also installed these coolant pipes on the engine. That way, we can walk through exactly where and how these reverse cooling mod kits are installed on this engine without any of the other obstructions like the intake manifold or the engine bay. Okay, let's start with this kit on the left. This is the VEMS tuning kit. This is exactly what you're gonna get in the mail if you order this kit, and like I said, it's about $90. This is the main part of the kit. This is a hose that's gonna tie into the back of that cylinder number four head, and this is actually the plug that's gonna screw into the head. And then they have a T on this side, and this is the side that ties into that heater core circuit. And from there, it gets sucked into your water pump. The first thing you'll notice is that pretty much all these parts are off-the-shelf parts. You can pretty much get this part in any auto parts store, this is just a standard high pressure hose. These are just standard stainless steel crimps, although I have to mention they are high quality and they're stainless steel, so that's a good thing. And then this right here, this billet anodized fitting, this is actually an off-shelf part from a company called Phoenix Industries. And they actually even have their little logo right there on it still. So VEMS is definitely sourcing their fittings from this company called Phoenix Industries. And as a matter of fact, I've actually used one of their fuel pressure regulators and they're a high quality company and I definitely like their products. But it's definitely not made in-house by VEMS. And this baggie comes with the kit as well. This actually has two hose clamps and a little fitting. And this is a fitting that actually screws into the back of that cylinder head. And I'll take that out right now so you can see a closer look. I'll also mention that these hose clamps look like they're stainless steel. Okay, here's that little fitting. And again, this is from Phoenix Industries. So VEMS is sourcing this one from Phoenix Industries as well. It's got a little crush washer on it. That should help seal it. But I'm pretty sure the instructions are probably have you put a little RTV in here. I don't know, we'll see. I definitely would add a little high temp gray RTV. And then on this side, this is actually what's called an AN fitting, which stands for Army Navy, I believe. And that actually screws into this port right here, right? So those two will screw together like this. Boom. And then this goes into the back of the head. And then here's the instructions they send. They talk about the problem, the solution. And then if you flip it over, this is where they walk you through installing the kit. They talk about the benefits, the needed tools, the pre-install inspection, and they walk through right here how to install it. And they have their contact information on the bottom. So that's pretty much the instruction from VEMS tuning. No pictures for the installation. All you'll see is a little bullet list right there for the instructions. So that's not all that ideal, but hopefully you guys can look some videos up or you're, or you're watching this video, so this is going to walk you through it. And this one over here on the right, this is actually the Get a Dom tuning kit. And I have to say, right off the bat, these are a much nicer kit. It's a much higher quality kit. You can see the fittings are just a lot cleaner and a lot more smoothed off. I really like the gold anodized look. I think there's a company called Beat Rush out of Australia that has a lot of gold anodized parts like this. So this would be a nice compliment for those parts if you have them on your Subaru. This also has a stainless steel clamp right here. This is like a, a factory clamp. It's got rubber hose. It comes with this little stainless steel T-fitting. And this is what you use to tie into that heater core circuit. And then it comes with a few hose clamps. Those hose clamps are basically used to tie in this T-fitting. And then for the Get a Dom tuning, at least he has a picture. The VEMS kit didn't even have a single picture. So get a Dom tune kit definitely has a one picture. That's nice. And then right here, they walk through all the steps to install it. And they actually have a little outline of the, of the, of the fitting right here. This, so this is actually used to trim that hose for certain applications. 
Okay, so if we're going to compare these two kits, what do they really look like? Well, as far as the T-fitting is concerned, they're virtually the same thing. I believe they're both a 5 8 inch or something equivalent, and they're just a T-fitting. One thing I'll mention is you might get a little bit better flow through these T-fittings if you swapped them out for a Y-fitting. I think the real difference is actually in the fitting that screws into the back of the head. That's where the Get a Dom Tune kit clearly has a much higher quality part, which means he pretty much designed it from scratch, and he's having them custom made, unlike the VEMS kit that basically just sources parts available from the shelf. And to be honest, you guys could literally put together the same kit that the VEMS kit has right here. And then the other thing I'll mention is that it's not very easy to see with the light, but the Get a Dom Tune fitting actually has a quite a bit larger interior diameter for the port that's exiting the head, which means that more coolant is gonna flow through this kit. And that means you're actually gonna have more cooling for cylinder number four with this kit. So I gotta be honest, based on the quality of the parts and the design, I think this Get a Dom kit is actually a better kit and it's gonna outperform the Venn's kit. And that's really what matters to me the most. Okay, let's go ahead and grab that Get a Dom Tune kit and let's walk through the installation on this EJ motor. Okay, we're here on the back of the engine. This is the left side of the engine, the left cylinder head, which is cylinders number two and number four. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that little plug right there. This is the plug that goes into that cylinder head and taps into that coolant passage right behind the combustion chamber. So we go ahead, oh, damn, don't do that. That's what you don't do. I know some of you guys out there are probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and try to make this yourself. All right, I actually have my little sizing gauge and I'll show you guys the size of this plug using the sizing gauge. Basically right there, it's an M20. That's the plug size. And then go ahead and screw it in. I didn't read the instructions, but you're probably going to want to put a little RTV on this. You can use that Ultra Gray, or you can go ahead and use a Subaru OEM RTV. So that's basically the idea. You're going to tap it in right there to the back of cylinder number four. Okay, then we'll go ahead and grab that T fitting. And we'll connect that to this rubber hose that we screwed in. Now you're going to have to read the instructions, but for certain makes and models, you're actually going to trim this hose and go ahead and trim this hose down to the length that's shown at the bottom of that instruction sheet. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a mock installation for you guys. And you'll need to put on one of those hose clamps, so don't forget to install those suckers. And this sucker goes around and is gonna tie into your heater core circuit. And you wanna tie into this black hard pipe, and I'm gonna put a little hose section right there to connect the two. As a matter of fact, I actually have a hose right here I can use, just to kind of show you guys what it looks like. And then I can step back and zoom out and we can follow this circuit back to the water pump. So you go ahead and take this sucker and that's gonna connect in there. And of course, you're gonna have those hose clamps on all these fittings. Okay guys, and we follow this black hard line down along the engine, you can actually see how it weaves down, down along the front of the engine, through a couple of hoses, and then ties into the water pump, right there on the front of your engine. And remember, this cavity down here is where that thermostat is and where that fresh cold coolant is being drawn into the water pump and pumped through your engine. So that's pretty much what the sucker looks like when it's installed goes into the back of that cylinder number four port. And that, guys, is why you seriously want to consider getting one of these reverse cooling mod kits for your Subaru. When you introduce a negative pressure point or an exit port for the coolant on the back of that cylinder number four coolant chamber on these Subaru heads, you actually introduce a lot more flow to that cylinder number four, which will actually cool that cylinder number four. And in theory, it could be solving one of the fundamental inherent design problems with the cooling system on these Subarus. So I think this is a critical, critical upgrade for any Subaru, especially Subaru that's gonna be making higher horsepower or running aggressive fuel and ignition maps with their Subaru. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a better understanding of how coolant flows through these Subaru engines. And I hope it gave you more insight into how coolant flows through the heads of these Subaru engines. And I hope it gives you a better idea of whether or not you wanna seriously consider purchasing one of these reverse cooling mod kits for your Subaru. So thanks so much for watching the video, guys. Thanks so much for supporting the Super Only channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments section. I'm definitely gonna be getting back to you guys. But for now, I wanna say thanks so much, guys. This is the Super Only channel. Until next time, guys, later. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast, and I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist, and I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. 
in these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru related R&D or digital marketing in media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Or if you work in private industry or for a public municipality and you'd like to contact me for professional environmental or engineering and design services, you can review my professional academic background, my professional research experience, and my professional consulting experience on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and sign into LinkedIn and look for Luke Shannon and then type TRC. That's the company I currently work for. And if you type Luke Shannon and TRC, I'm the only person that's going to come up. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.